Good afternoon. Welcome to a special edition of Inlandia Literary Journey. Today we are celebrating Independence Day, and we're doing so by sharing some of our favorite poems that have to do with uh, uh, that celebrate our nation, uh, our independence, most of all. And to start off, we have uh, Katie Porter. Katie, what are you going to be reading? Well, um, I'm going to be reading a poem, or actually two poems, by Walt Whitman, and one. Uh, by Sherman Alexi, and possibly one by Ellie Schoenfeld. Let's see uh, if we have time. Um, I really love the Whitman pieces. I feel they resonate especially with, um, with me. And I love the fact that Gail Brandeis, our Inlandia Literary Laureate, included them in her book, Self Storage. Uh, Song of Myself figures prominently there. And I used uh, some of his work in my column today. So this is, I hear America singing. I hear America singing, the varied carols I hear, those of mechanics, each one singing his, as it should be, blithe and strong. The carpenter singing his, as he measures his plank or beam. The mason singing his, as he makes ready for work or leaves off work. The boatman singing what belongs to him and his boat. The deckhand singing on the steamboat deck. The shoemaker singing as he sits on his bench. The hatter singing as he stands. The woodcutter's song, the plowboy's on his way in the morning or at the noon intermission or at sundown. The delicious singing of the mother or of the young wife at work or of the girl sewing or washing, each singing what belongs to her and to none else. The day, what belongs to the day? At night, the party of young fellows, robust, friendly, singing with open mouths their strong, melodious songs. Whitman also wrote a poem called America. It's very brief. <coughs> Center of equal daughters, equal sons, all, all alike, endeared, grown, ungrown, young or old, strong, ample, fair, enduring, capable, rich, perennial with the earth, with freedom, law, and love, a grand, sane, towering, seated mother, chaired in the adamant of time. Very nice. So um, I thought I'd read one that is by uh, Sherman Alexie called Independence Day. And Sherman Alexie, can you give us a little background on Well, he is a prominent Native American author. He's written a number of books uh, and, and poems. Uh, this is in his book called Face. And he's also, uh, the name of his book that he's most famous for, I'm suddenly blanking Smoke on. Smoke Signals. Smoke Signals? Yeah. Okay. I was thinking di Diary of a Young yeah, Indian? Yeah, Part-Time Indian. Oh, thank you. Okay. So um, I wanted to read this poem because I feel like it, it both speaks to um, strengths and weaknesses in all of us and it's called Independence Day. In a rush, we used an assigned parking space, and upon our return, the displaced stranger said, that's my spot, you jerk. His rage surprised me, but I didn't sense any danger until he took five steps toward us. My wife and sons were suddenly targets, so I knew I had to protect them. Maybe he had a knife or gun. Maybe he was crazy but his mood changed when I stepped out of the shadows. I'm a big guy, all shoulders and gut and thighs, and I was not afraid. I grew up trading blows with bullies, and the man quickly realized that I would fight hard. Chastened, he retreated back toward his car and with a softer tone said, next time you better leave me a note. My anger bloomed as my fear receded, so I stepped fast toward him and reveled at his sudden meekness. Just leave it alone, I said, 
possessed by some childhood devil who wanted me to snap and burn the man's bones. Stop it, my wife said. Just get in the car. She and my sons hurried into their seats, but I thought I would be admitting defeat if I did the same. I wouldn't let down my guard for a moment. I would kill this stranger and eat his lungs, stomach, heart, thumbs, and eyes. I became the one in love with danger. Ashamed, I shouted, have a safe 4th of July, and looked at the man for the first time. He was rude, Napoleonic, and weak. Just back from work, he didn't want to fight. He wanted to sit on his couch and watch TV. The man gave me the finger, but I just waved and climbed into our car. Contrite and dazed, I mumbled an apology to my wife. I thought the man was threatening our lives. I know, she said. You had to back him off, and you did that. You proved you were tough, but then you got mean. And yes, it was shitty. I took the man's space and his dignity. Is it surprising that I know how to be cruel? My entire career is based on revenge. I think of my sons so tender and new and how they'd witnessed me walk to the edge and nearly begin the long harrowing drop before I heeded their mother's call to stop. I know my boys had so many questions, but I failed to give them this lesson. Sons, what I did to that man was wrong. There can be that much weakness in being strong. Very nice. So, I think, I think that's it. Let's, shall so, we? So, Gail, it's yes. your turn. What, uh, what are you going to read for us? I'm going to read a few selections from this book, Celebrate America in Poetry and Art, which is a collection put together by the Smithsonian Institution and was a gift from my mom several years ago. Um, she decided to give it to me because there is a Statue of Liberty on the cover and she's very proud or was very proud of the fact that when I was 18, an essay I wrote about the meaning of liberty was one of three chosen to be included in the time capsule of the Statue of Liberty, which will be opened in 2086. Wow. People will be there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So I guess it makes sense to start with the New Colossus, which is the poem that Emma Lazarus wrote about the Statue of Liberty when it was first um, dedicated. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame, with conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning, and her name, Mother of Exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor that twin cities frame. Keep, ancient lands, your storied prompt, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. So that's Emma Lazarus, and I love her reminder that this country has always been a welcoming place. And I hope that people who want to close borders remember that too. Um, this next poem is by Langston Hughes, which I think might be a response to Whitman's poem. Um, and he too reminds us that America is filled with many voices and not just white men, which has And Langston of, Hughes, of course, is the is. premier poet of the Harlem Renaissance. Yes, and yes. Has done so many great works. Yes, definitely. And this one's called I Too. I too sing America. I am the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes, but I laugh and eat well and grow strong. Tomorrow I'll sit at the table when company comes. Nobody will dare say to me eat in the kitchen then. Besides, they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I too am America. And then I'll read one more by John Tagliabue. Um, called The Pinta, The Nina, and The Santa Maria, and many other cargoes of light. America, I carry you around with me the way Buddha carried a grain of sand, the way Columbus carried a compass, the way Whitman carried a poem growing, expanding like a galaxy, the way a firefly carries a galaxy, 
the way Faulkner carries eloquence, the way eloquence carries hope, faith, and the 4th of July. Oh, that's great. Wow. That's nice. And now it's uh, John Bender's turn. John is uh, the Metro Editor for the Press Enterprise. And what poem are you going to be reading for us? I'm going to be reading I Am Waiting by Lawrence Ferlinghetti. Uh, you know, I always like poems from the beat tradition. What I liked about this one is the hope, the humor, and then also some bitterness about the way the country was going when he wrote this. Uh, it's a fun poem. Grab some coffee, because it, <laughs> so it's not a short one, but it's worth, it's worth it. I'm waiting for my case to come up, and I'm waiting for a rebirth of wonder, and I'm waiting for someone to really discover America and wail. And I'm waiting for the discovery of a new symbolic western frontier. And I'm waiting for the American Eagle to really spread its wings, to straighten up and fly right. And I'm waiting for the age of anxiety to drop dead. And I'm waiting for the war to be fought, which will make the world safe for anarchy. And I'm waiting for the final withering away of all governments. And I'm perpetually awaiting a rebirth of wonder. I'm waiting for the second coming. And I'm waiting for a religious revival to sweep through the state of Arizona, and I am waiting for the grapes of wrath to be stored, and I am waiting for them to prove that God is really American, and I am seriously waiting for Billy Graham and Elvis Presley to exchange roles, seriously, and I am waiting to see God on television, piped into church altars, if only they can find the right channel to tune in on, and I am waiting for the Last Supper to be served again with a strange new appetizer, and I am perpetually awaiting a rebirth of wonder. I am waiting for my number to be called, and I am waiting for the living end, and I am waiting for Dad to come home, his pockets full of irradiated silver dollars, and I am waiting for the atomic tests to end, and I am waiting happily for things to get much worse before they improve, and I am waiting for the Salvation Army to take over, and I am waiting for the human crowd to wander off a cliff somewhere, clutching its atomic umbrella, and I am waiting for Ike to act, and I am waiting for the meek to be blessed and inherit the earth without taxes. And I am waiting for forests and animals to reclaim the earth as theirs. And I am waiting for a way to be devised to destroy all nationalisms without killing anyone. And I am waiting for linnets and planets to fall like rain. And I am waiting for lovers and weepers to lie down together again in a new rebirth of wonder. And I'm waiting for the great divide to be crossed. And I'm anxiously waiting <coughs> for the secret of eternal life to be discovered by an obscure general practitioner and save me forever from certain death. And I'm waiting for life to begin. And I'm waiting for the storms of life to be over. And I'm waiting to set sail for happiness. And I'm waiting for a reconstructed Mayflower to reach America with its picture story and TV rights sold in advance to the natives. And I'm waiting for the lost music to sound again in the lost continent in a new rebirth of wonder. I'm waiting for the day that maketh all things clear. And I'm waiting for <coughs> Old Man River to just stop rolling along past the country club. And I'm waiting for the deepest south to just stop reconstructing itself in its own image. And I'm waiting for a sweet desegregated chariot to swing low and carry me back to Old Virginia. And I'm waiting for Old Virginia to discover and I'm waiting for God to look out from Lookout Mountain and see the ode to the Confederate dead as a real farce. And I'm awaiting retribution for what America did to Tom Sawyer. And I'm perpetually awaiting a rebirth of wonder. I'm waiting for Tom Swift to grow up. And I'm awaiting for the American boy to take off beauty's clothes and get on top of her. And I'm waiting for Alice in Wonderland to retransmit to me her total dream of innocence. And I'm waiting for Child Roland to come in the final darkest tower. And I am waiting for Aphrodite to grow live arms at a final disarmament conference in a new rebirth of wonder. I'm waiting to get some intimations of immortality by recollecting my early childhood. And I'm waiting for the green mornings to come again. Youth's dumb green fields come back again. And I'm waiting for some strains of unpremeditated art to shake my typewriter. And I'm waiting to write the great indelible poem. And I'm waiting for the long lost careless rapture and I'm perpetually waiting for the fleeing lovers on the Grecian urn to catch each other up at last and embrace. And I'm awaiting perpetually and forever a renaissance of wonder. Great reading, John. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, this has uh, been a special edition of Inlandia Literary Journeys. Be sure to uh, read the uh, column in the Press Enterprise every Tuesday. 
uh, visit um, our blog on uh, pe.com and uh, come back again to see what we're up to next week uh, for uh, for Gail Brandeis and Katie Porter and John Bender. Mm -hmm. We wish you a happy 4th of July. Happy 4th. <laughs>